This is me, Brian. Got me a great Kickstarter. Mountain Dew, look at that. And the sandwich. Right, just came back from the park over by the library. There was some good people over there handing out sandwiches and stuff. And then the this one is a pastrami with horseradish cheese, mayo, and stone ground mustard. Sometimes you get lucky. Most of the time it's just peanut butter jelly and a bag of Cheetos. <laughs> Anyways, right, today we're going to talk about resources. Right? And the ones that you have access to. <laughs> Here, this is one. This is a readily accessible resource that you can, you know, access. You know what I'm saying? There are literally thousands of good people out there driving around in their cars or their truck or their van or their SUV. Right? With a whole truckload, a whole box full of sandwiches and, you know, drinks, fruit, socks. You know, little hygiene packs, stuff like that. they will give it to you. I could just walk right up, you know what I'm saying? In some cases, you don't even got to ask. They'll just hand it to you. This is, right, an on-the-ground, you know what I'm saying, resource that you can take advantage of. All you got to do, you know what I'm saying, is find wherever these people hit, right, every day, every other day, once a week. Right, you know what I'm saying? Usually, it's around the library or any, you know, the major parks. You know, San or anywhere, you know, fairly close to where homeless people accumulate. Right? And uh, I mean, I remember at Phoenix, lots of there was the hot dog guy, there was the Korean people, the man and the woman, they had a little blue Prius. And they used to give out honey buns and Pepsi. <laughs> right? There was the vegans, you know what I'm saying? The, you know, food not bombs. Right? There are all kinds of, you know, readily available on the ground resources that, you know, people would just give you stuff if you don't have anything, right? Now, in any major city, Phoenix, San Francisco, Seattle, Houston, Dallas, Cincinnati, you know, well, there's a lot of major cities. Right, you know what I'm saying? You can go down to the local DES office, you know what I'm saying, food stamp place, right? And you can, since now that you're homeless, you automatically qualify, right? You could go down there and you could put in an application for food stamps, right? And most likely you'll get them because you're homeless, right? Heck yeah, look at that. Woo-hoo! Thanks, Grandma! Also, at the same time, while you're applying for food stamp, at the top of the application, there's a series of boxes: EBT, health, you know, healthcare, right? You know, cash advance payments. I mean, check all the boxes. Don't just apply for food stamps. Apply for the medical care, right? You'll probably get it in Arizona, right? Maricopa County, most of the counties in Arizona. You, if you're homeless and you apply for food stamps, you automatically get health care. At that point, you need to take advantage of the health care, right? There's also, in some states, when you apply for food stamps, you know what I'm saying, they have a little class that you got to go down to in, in order, you know, to get your, you know, qualify for your food stamp, right? And uh, you take some little class and they check you off, you know what I'm saying, and then you're good for another month or two until you got to go down to the little class. Big deal. The little class is good for you. It would it would it connect you with even more resources that you don't know about, places to go, shelters, places where you can get free clothing, free shoes, bicycles. You know what I'm saying it's not just the Salvation Army or the local drug rehab places trying to help you, but there's all kinds of programs, right? So you have to go down there, you know what I'm saying, and figure out which programs it is that you're eligible for, and then apply for them. You will get help. You will. Right? Now, oh, but I don't know where to go and I don't know what to do, man. But standing there on the corner, you know what I'm saying, waiting for somebody to give you something is not help. Right? What I used to do, I had a system. Remember, I've said this a hundred times. There's a system to homelessness. This was my system. Right? Whenever I, you know, ended up on the homeless, right? The first couple of three or four days or a week, I would spend actively, constructively trying to find the resources that I need to help me, right? 
I would go down there and I would fit, I'd wait for two or three hours until they called my name. I wouldn't wait five minutes and give up. I'd sit there and wait, right? And then once, once I got my little application in and I talked to the little worker right there and they stamped everything and approved everything because they're probably going to get approved, right? The next thing I would do is I would, I would hike down over to, right, the, you know, one of the, you know, qualifying medical health places or one of the mental health places, you know, like community bridges, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, and go in there. And, and you know fill out the application or the registration card or whatever and figure out what and wait my turn to talk to the social worker and figure out what it was that the social worker could help me with you know saying that I really truly need it did I need ID do, do, you know do, 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 right everybody's got to have ID you got to have a birth certificate you know what I'm saying in a lot of places you know what I'm saying where where can I go to find you know saying daily labor daily labor is not really good you know what I'm saying? But, but, you know, you can get, you know, make money at it if you show up at 3 o'clock in the morning and wait in line till 7. Right? And different things like that. You know what I'm saying? And then once, once I got, you know what I'm saying, hooked up, you know what I'm saying, with my medical care and my food stamps, you know what I'm saying? And, and I had me a little sheet of all the different places in town that would, you know, help me and provide resources for me. You know what I'm saying? Then I would, you know, the next thing I would do is I'd hunt around for, you know, a semi-permanent good camp. This is a good camp right here. I got me, you know, relatively sheltered from the elements and the rain. The library, the right, is, is an unlimited source of information, right, for you. You can figure out anything. You can learn anything. You know what I'm saying? Right? You can find anything. Right? Sure, COVID-19 restrictions and all that stuff apply, but you know what? You can still access the computer lab, you know what I'm saying? Right, because that, you know, young people, their phone is their lifeline, right? But the problem with that is, right, is that usually your phone is the first thing that you lose. Either, the, either you can't pay the bill and it gets canceled, you lose it, somebody stole it, or, you know what I'm saying, it gets smashed up and broken. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? So, so the library, I keep saying it's the third time I said it, the library is the place where you need to go. I had to go down to the library in Phoenix on Wednesday. Because they had these free seminars and classes and stuff down, you know, downstairs on the bottom floor. I learned all kinds of stuff. I learned some marketing stuff. I learned, you know, I learned some editing things, tricks and stuff. Right? And on top of it, I had fun. And, you know, I killed a couple, two, three hours. Right? Learn, you know, met some new people. Right? That's another part of your, that's another one of your resources that you can access. It's networking, it's meeting people and being good, you know what I'm saying? And doing the right things. Not just running around up and down looking for the next bag of dope. Right? Nobody's going to help you do that. Man, this was a good sandwich. Now, this is going to sound kind of dumb, but this is another thing I used to do, right? You know what I'm saying? Once a month when my YouTube money hit, you know what I'm saying? I'd go head downtown, you know what I'm saying? After five, you know, you know, right around happy hour for down, you know, some of the local bars downtown. And I'd post up and I'd have myself a nice cold beer. I wasn't there just to drink beer, right? I was there to meet people. Right, that I got a lot of really powerful, important, you know, upper class friends back in Phoenix that still email with me, that still call me on my phone, you know what I'm saying, that I met down there at the bar. You know what I'm Because they're getting off work, it's happy hour, a couple of lawyers, you know what I'm saying, the doctor dude from the doctor office over there in the bank building, you know what I'm saying? If you be real with these people, you don't gotta tell them your whole life story. You know what I'm saying? You just, you don't even got to tell them anything. You just hang out with them. Right? And then slowly over time, you build up your credibility with people. Right? And then you end up in a position where you have friends that will help you. You have that occasional place to sleep, you know what I'm saying, on the couch one night. You know what I'm saying? Or, or an opportunity to make a little bit of scratch money cleaning somebody's yard or their house or something. 
right? There's all kinds of ways to just to dig up a resource that you can use. I've said this, right? Adapting to your environment and learning to use the resources around you is what the biggest the biggest benefit that you could get for yourself, that you can make for yourself, right? Now, the shelter, the shelter systems in America, they suck. Very few of them are actually, you know, good enough, right, and have enough resources of their own to actually help people break the cycle of homelessness and get up out of the hole so that they can move on to being a better person. Right, that's the whole goal of the system. Right, you know what I'm saying? But but you have to apply yourself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look, I, I, I of the seven different times that I've been homeless in my lifetime, five of them I had a full time job. Right? You know what I'm saying? If it, it there's no rules, and homelessness has no rules. Right? You know what I'm saying? So you can go get a job just because you, you, you know, I mean, there's many people that are quitting jobs right now and running off to go join the van lights, you know what I'm saying, or the boat lights, or to go live out in the boonies, right? Heck, in California, they're paying kids $22 an hour to work at McDonald's. You're telling me, you know what I'm saying, that, that you ain't got enough gumption to go out there and find yourself a little tiny job flipping burgers at McDonald's for $22 an hour. Sure, it's not the optimal job to have. Damn near everybody want to work over there to mine under five thousand a year, but a job is a job, and it's a road out of the mess, right? And it does. And you don't have to have a full-time job. You can get it. You know, there's millions of Mexican guys running around in their old beat-up pickup trucks with a, you know, or the dead truck trader. Right, cutting palm trees and shrubs and doing landscaping. Those dudes make good money. They will give you a job. All you got to do is show up on the corner every morning when they drive by to pick you up, right? And you're going to make a hundred bucks today trimming palm trees. You will. You just have to want to. You don't stand in there. Oh man, that's a cool bike. I wish I had one. Wishing ain't going to get it. And right, you got to be careful what you wish for because sometimes you might get it. Right? Pull yourself up. Get up out of the dirt, man. Come on. You got, you got, now you got a food stamp card. Now you got health care. Now you got a little bit of resources in your backpack. You know where you kind of need to go. You know what I'm saying? Right? Quit being stupid. Quit being afraid. Quit being, uh, 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 right? That, all you're doing is making yourself a bigger target. Build the routine. Right, do it every day. If if it revolves around canning or scrapping or whatever or yard working or whatever, right? Build that routine and keep your eyes open for that one opportunity, right? That's gonna lift you up out of the mess. Right? But remember this, right? Just because you've gotten the opportunity doesn't mean everything's gonna be handed to you on a silver platter. You have to work at it. You have to apply yourself. You got to be there every day. The last job I had, the boss got on me, right? Because I'd worked there seven months, and in them seven months, I'd missed 28 days. That's not good, right? But because I was a good hard worker, and I, when I was, when I did show up for work, I was always on time. I always worked my butt off. I always made sure the stuff was safe and everybody was doing good. You know what I'm saying? The boss got on me. Right? But he told me, he said, I know you could do better, Brian, so do better. So I did. From that point forward, for the rest of the year, I didn't miss another day. Right? And on top of it, three months later, after he reviewed my attendance, he gave me a dollar an hour raise because I listened to what he said and I applied myself for that. Heck yeah, kick start. Now, for those of you that are felons, <laughs> that's not an excuse either, right? There are lots of factory jobs, there are lots of manufacturing jobs, there are lots of construction jobs, there are jobs everywhere that are hire felons. In fact, there's a website on the stupid internet, you know what I'm saying, that's felonjobs.com. All you gotta do is go on there, surf around in your area where you're at, figure out which companies hire felons, and then go down and buy. 
chances are, you know what I'm saying, they're going to hire you because they hire felons. And because they, they're short on the workforce, right, they're going to give you a job. Right? But don't be like the rest of the idiots and just stand around, you know, pushing the broom. You, once again, you have to apply yourself. That's the only way up out of this mess. Is that you have to be proactive and you have to be determined, you know what I'm saying, that you are going to succeed and you're going to get up out of the show. Look at me. What? Right. I'm out here trying to help you guys. Giving you the knowledge and the experience that I went through when I was out there on the streets. Yeah. I walked all the way across the wide expanse of the future and I ended up here with an opportunity to number one, to be a real human being again, to number two, to be part of a family that actually cared about me and was concerned with my health and my welfare, and number three, the opportunity to use my skills to better all of us, to push all of us forward. Yeah. This is me, Brian. Please like and subscribe and share this video if you think other homeless newbies need to know, need to see a real slice of life. Thank you. Man, it's getting cold. I think I'm going to light the fire.